What's going on my boys? It's Nick coming at you today on the channel with my update to my Mutant Goaty deck profile post Darkwing Blast. I know you guys have been waiting for this profile for a while and I've been waiting for these Goaty cards to get released and today is the day that they're officially available at all of your local retail stores. So if you want to go ahead and buy a set or a box of Darkwing Blast and have the opportunity to pull some of these really cool Goaty cards then I highly encourage you to do so because this set's actually really, really awesome. So much good support in general for like rogue decks and meta decks alike. Um, but with that being said, we're going to jump right into this updated profile. And for those of you who think you've seen Mutant Goaty profiles already, I'm here to let you know that this will be the most definitive version of the deck as possible. Nobody, and I can almost guarantee nobody, has invested the amount of time that I've invested in this deck. I've been playing Mutant since they released originally, and I've also been playing Goaty since they released Empower the Elements, and I've been testing the living hell out of this deck so many different ways, and I couldn't be happier with the build that I came up with. This is the most competitive version of Mutant Goaty I think I've come up with, period. So you guys are in for a hell of a ride, and I cannot wait to show you some of the stuff that I'm running. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Nick. I highly encourage you to subscribe if you're not, because we do a lot of really cool deck profiles and Yu-Gi-Oh! related content on all types of rogue decks, and we're working our way to 1,000 subs, and I cannot do it without your guys' help. So if you're watching this video right now and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, like the video, comment down below what you think, and also feel free to browse through some of my other uploads, and you might actually find a deck profile that you might really like. So with that being said, we're going to jump right into this updated Mutant Goaty list, and um, we're going to... Start things off, of course, with our Mutant lineup. Uh, mutant lineup, I'm going to be honest, really hasn't changed. Uh, like I said, I've been piloting Mutant for a really, really long time, and I think the ratios that I have are perfect. Um, so we're on triple copies of MO5. This is your Mutant starter. On normal or special, searches you a Mutant monster from deck to hand, and it has a secondary effect, which allows you to banish a card, any card, from your hand or field to summon the appropriate mutant boss monster uh, from your hand or deck based on the type of card that was banished, in this case being monster, spell, or trap. MO5 is very strong. It's level 2. It's a water psychic, mind you, so it is an Itali target. Just overall an insanely strong card, and I couldn't have a better home in this deck. Um, then we're on triple copies of Mutant SD46, the secondary starter of the theme. Um, it is a level 3 psychic monster, so still another Itali target. Uh, water attribute uh, upon normal or special it lets you add a mutant spell or trap from the deck to your hand um, So that's you know really important it lets you go plus one just like mo5 does and just like mo5 He is also able to banish a card from your hand or or field uh, To facilitate the special summoning of a mutant boss monster based on the type of card banished being monster spell or trap so between mo5 and st46 you have Two really good starters, and the fact that they're both Itali targets is just insane, further adds to the consistency of the deck overall. We're on two copies of Mutant Mutant. This is the newest uh, Mutant card that was added to the theme uh, somewhat recently, and it's very, very strong. However, I don't think it's worth playing three of, Despite it still being an extender, uh, pretty much what this card does is if you control a mutant card, you can special summon this card from your hand. Uh, what sets this card apart from the other mutants is the fact that um, it can special summon your mutant bosses, but the way it does it is slightly differently because you can banish mutant cards from your hand, field, or I'm sorry, from your hand or deck. Um, to facilitate the special summon of an appropriate mutant boss, whereas the other MO5 and SD46 have to banish a card from your hand or field. Uh, this one lets you banish specifically a mutant card from your deck in order to get the summon off. But the drawback is that you take damage equal to the summon monster's attack when it resolves. That's not too big of a gripe, but that's actually part of the reason why we're only playing two, because realistically, you just need one, um, you know... For your starter, like when you're going first, you search it off MO5 and it's a free extender. And then sometimes the second copy comes up, uh, you know, if the game turns into a grind. But outside of that, playing a third is just a brick. You really don't need it. Uh, also, you can still summon this off Itali as well because it is a level one psychic. So I feel that two copies is more than enough, especially when you have multiple ways to search it through cards like MO5. And you can also special summon it off the mutant field spell as well if it winds up being banished. Um, so that's pretty cool. So there's two copies of mutant mutant. And that rounds out the mutant starters. Now we're going into our mutant bosses. We're on two beasts, one mist, and one arsenal. 
I am still on the, under the notion that this is the best lineup of mutant bosses and the best ratio to be running. I've seen people play like two beast, one arsenal, don't run mist. Or I've seen people play like one beast and two arsenal, don't run mist. Uh, mist is usually the one that I've seen most people cut. And for the life of me, I can't understand why people undervalue this card. This card, while it might not be the most relevant, still I think has a very strong place in the deck as a one of, simply because like not only are there still a copious amount of traps in this format, even decks like Tier Element still play very powerful traps, which Mist can capitalize on. You still have Eldritch running around the format, and not to mention, you have Fluunderies still being a very strong and relevant deck this format. And Fluunderies, in case you haven't noticed, still main decks the Wind Barrier statue. Mutant Mist is a Wind attribute monster, meaning under the Barrier Lock, we can still summon a Mutant Boss. If we're not running Mist, we don't have like access to that. So I don't understand why people seem to think that Mist is a bad card. I appreciate having the additional name and the additional attribute in deck because it, honestly, it comes up so much. I can't count how many times Mist has bailed me out of a jam, whereas Beast and Arsenal are usually the one taking all the, the heavy punches and the heavy hits. When my board gets cleared, Mist is usually the one that I tag into and help save the day. So two Beast is relevant because Beast is the one that you can special summon if you banish a monster specifically. And since this is a goatee variant of the mutant deck, Beast comes up a lot. But Mist, you special summon by banishing a spell. In Arsenal, you special summon by banishing a trap off of your mutant starters, respectively. Uh, Beast is a spell negate and banish. Very, very strong. as a quick effect, mind you. Um, Mist is pretty much a pot of greed. Whenever your opponent activates a trap card or trap effect, as a quick effect, you get to draw two cards. And then Arsenal, um, he's pretty much whenever your opponent activates a monster effect, as a quick effect, you can target a monster on their field doesn't have to be the monster that activated, keep in mind, and banish it. Now, they're all quick effects, and then uh, the cost is that you have to banish a card you control or have in your hand. And this is why the Mutant Goatee variant is so powerful, because the banishing is cost. So even if their effects get negated, you're still banishing cards, and in the instance where you're banishing Goatee specifically, you're getting a lot of insane recursion and really strong value back for your investment, um, which you otherwise wouldn't get in like a pure Mutant deck, for example. Uh, so I still think that two beasts, one miss, one arsenal is the perfect ratio. Also, something else to note, they all uh, have various forms of protection uh, from targeting immunity. Uh, for example, beast cannot be targeted by monsters, specifically. Mist cannot be targeted by spells, and arsenal cannot be targeted by traps. I can't tell you how many times that those protection effects come up where people try to imperm the arsenal or effect veiler beast or forbidden chalice the um, mist. Like, it do doesn't work. Anything that targets um, will not affect these cards, and each one floats upon destruction into a um, specific uh, banished mutant card. Uh, Beast upon destruction lets you add a banished mutant trap. Mist lets you add a banished mutant monster. And Arsenal lets you add a banished mutant spell back to your hand. So they're all very strong in their own right. And um, again, these are the bosses that your little mutant starters can tag into. And I think that again, that two beast, one miss, one Arsenal is the absolute best ratio to be running. I really don't understand why people continue to seem to think that Mist is not relevant this format or any format. You're always going to come across back row heavy decks. And like I said, the fact that Fluunder is still running around at practically full power and the fact that all the Flunder cards got reprints means that Flunder is more than likely to be seen, especially in a local setting. But now moving on to the Goaties. We're on triple copies of Paces, Light of Goatee. This is, uh, hasn't changed from the previous uh, ver ver variant of the deck. Um, triple Paces... We don't really get to use this on-field effect much. What we mainly use this card for is the fact that when he's banished, by any means, including even if he's banished for cost, during the next standby phase of the turn after he was banished, he special summons himself. And if he's special summoned during the opponent's turn specifically, he allows you to, uh, has the ability to quick sync, or quick synchro summon as a quick effect into a fish synchro specifically. And since your mutant bosses happen to be level eight, um, all of them, Beast, Mist, Arsenal, are all level eights, and your goatees are all usually level 2 tuners. 8 and 2 make 10, which means you can summon the goatee boss monster, goatee the deep beyond, during the opponent's turn pretty consistently. I would say, argue even almost more consistently than you can in pure goatee. Um, especially since, like, pure goatee, for example, doesn't even have, like, a one-card combo, or at least what mutant does through cards like mutant mutant, where even if you just have nothing else and all you have is one copy of mutant mutant, you can still get to a mutant boss through a single mutant mutant, um, which I think is cool. But anyway, so triple paces, again, we just use these cards as banish fodder, and unlike any other card you banish, uh, the goatees give you advantage on the following standby after they're banished. It's almost like, you know, you pay up front 
your cost, and then you you get your return investment on the standby phase in the form of a free summon and the ability to synchro into stuff that you normally wouldn't have access to. But moving on, two copies of Shift, Fairy of the Goaty. Again, this ratio hasn't changed from the previous uh, version of the deck. Uh, I think Shift um, does pretty much the same thing as Paces does. If he's banished, um, doesn't matter how, during the standby phase of the next turn, he can summon himself, and if it's the opponent's turn, he can quick sync into a fish synchro specifically. What makes Shift a little bit different than Paces is that Paces' first effect states you can banish Paces to special a fish from hand. We usually don't need to do that because we're not really playing that many fish that are worth special summoning from hand. So, Paces usually gets used through the secondary effect, the banished one, but Shift, on the other hand, his first effect actually comes up a lot more in the sense that if he's in the graveyard, he can banish himself by targeting a fish on field and increase the attack of that fish monster by 500 points into the end phase. Now, the attack buff is whatever. What is relevant is the fact that Shift can banish himself from the graveyard, and then when he's banished, he summons himself in the following standby. So it's just a card that you can keep recurring over and over again, and you can almost start like a loop of sorts, where, you know, you have a fish on field, you banish Shift from grave, targeting that fish, Shift comes back, you quick sink into something, putting the Shift back in the graveyard, and then you can banish it all over again and repeat the process. So two Shift, I think, is really, really strong. Um, I could see the argument for playing three, but given that this is not a pure goatee deck, um, we wanted to keep the, the main deck count sh small. We are running a 41 card list currently, and I think the triple paces to shift is the perfect ratio. Um, so moving forward, uh, moving on with the profile, we're on a one copy of Zep, Ruby of the Goaty. This is brand new, out of Darkwing Blast, and initially, I believe this card got mistranslated, and we all thought it was a lot better than what it was going to be, but once we got the official TCG translation for the card, for the effect, it turns out it's not actually as great as it was all cracked up to be. And what I mean by that is, we initially thought that when this card was banished during the opponent's turn, it could special summon itself back at any point during their turn, as long as it was banished on their turn, if that makes sense. But how it actually works is, when it's banished, if it's the opponent's turn, it immediately comes back at the time it was banished. Like, there's no, like, pause or delay in that. The moment it's banished, it activates and summons itself. And then when it is summoned, uh, you can quick sync so, uh, into a fish synchro if it's uh, the opponent's turn. So it works a little bit differently than paces and shift, but the problem is that it needs to be banished during the opponent's turn specifically in order for it to do anything. If it's banished during your turn, nothing happens. You get no value back. So that's why we're only on one copy of Zep, because if you open with Zep, it's not a very good card to banish for cost off of your mutant starters, because sure, you, you can banish it, and summon like Mutant Beast, for example, but then your Zep is just stuck in the Banish Zone and it's never going to come back. Whereas at least if you banish it during the opponent's turn, with let's say your Mutant Boss Monsters specifically, uh, because it's their quick effects, you can trigger this very easily. You know, you can use like uh, Mutant Beast as an example, negate a spell during the opponent's turn, banish the Zep as cost, and then Zep immediately comes back, summons itself, and then you immediately quick sync which I think is really badass. But overall, playing more than one copy, especially in this hybrid variant, just seems very foolish. Um, I think one is more than enough. There are times when I open this and it, it feels pretty dead because again, you really don't want to start with this card. But it is still a new goatee and it is a tuner, an additional tuner we have, so it's worth playing the one of at least. But moving on, we are on one copy of Snopios, Shade of the Goatee, also brand new out of Darkwing Blast. This is a level six water fish non-tuner. And during the main phase, as a quick effect, so it's the main phase, so either player's turn, you can banish two fish monsters from your hand and or graveyard to then special summon this card from your hand. So he can special summon himself from hand by banishing two fishes from either your hand and or grave, respectively. Then when this card is special summoned, you can target one face-up card on the field, any card on the field, including himself, and then if that card were to leave the field, you banish it instead. So this is really, really cool because you can summon this during the opponent's turn off of his own effect and then target a monster they control. And then if that monster leaves, it gets banished or target any like spell, trap, anything. Anything you target with Snopios gets banished when it leaves the board, even if you target himself. And the reason why you're wondering why you'd want to do that is because if you target Snopios, if he gets banished, uh, doesn't matter how, you can banish a fish from your graveyard to then add the Snopios back to your hand. So it's a very... Honestly, this is probably the strongest main deck goatee card in the entire goatee theme. The only reason why we're playing one copy is because, again, this is not a pure goatee deck, so we are not running a copious amount of fish monsters. We're only on, like I said, the Paces, the Shift, and the Zep. Um, 
And that's just not enough goaties or fish to warrant running multiple copies of Snopios, because Snopios is only live if you have either fish in hand or grave to banish, which given the small amount of fish we run, doesn't always come up. So that's why we're on the one copy. But this card is absolutely nuts, and is definitely does some really cool interactions. I can't wait to show you guys the like combo tutorials and uh, live duel videos showing what this card is actually capable of. So one copy of Snopios, and then newly added to the deck to help support some of our fish combos, we're on two copies of Lifeless Leaf Fish. This is a brand new card to the deck, at least. It's been around for a bit. It's a level four water fish monster, and when it is summoned, doesn't matter how, it can be flip summoned, special summoned, normal summoned, you can send a fish monster from your deck to the graveyard except himself. Lifeless Leaf Fish is able to dump your copy of Shif, Fairy of the Goaty, uh, from deck to grave, and then uh, you use Shift's effect in the graveyard to banish it, targeting the Leaf Fish, uh, and it gains 500 attack, but again, that doesn't matter. You're only doing this because Shift can banish itself from grave. And then during the opponent's standby phase, or the next standby after it was banished, Shift comes back, and then you can quick sync using the Shift and the Leaf Fish into something very, very spicy, which we'll get to shortly. But Leaf Fish, very strong as, a, as an additional summon for this deck, if you're not relying on the Mutant line specifically, or if you have like an E-Telly, for example, you can normal summon the Leaf Fish and then E-Telly into your Mutant combo, and then have both engines running simultaneously, which is really strong. Now, Leaf Fish does have another effect, uh, but it seldom comes up. He can like shuffle uh, three fish monsters from the graveyard back in the deck and then draw a card. But again, that seldom comes up, and honestly, it really doesn't matter for the purposes of this deck specifically. All we really use the Leaf Fish for is for the on summon effect that it has. Uh, but moving on to the last card in the main deck is two copies of Cash Tira Fenrir. Something that you'll probably notice over the course of this profile is the fact that we are running less of a hand trap lineup which means that going second is sometimes a bit of a chore because now we have less ways to disrupt our opponent during their turn specifically. So I wanted to add something to the deck that helped us going second, and Fenrir was the absolute perfect card. Now I'm well aware that Fenrir is absolutely crazy expensive, and if you can't afford Fenrir or don't want to run it in the deck, you don't have to. This is a disclaimer, Fenrir is not needed in this deck by any means. The only reason why I'm running it is because I wanted to build the most competitive version of the deck I could, and Fenrir was an obvious choice. Uh, but if you want to cut the Fenrir, um, the decks have 41 cards, remember. So if you cut Fenrir, uh, I would cut them both, and I would honestly just run either any other hand trap in its place, or cut them both and then run main deck one copy of Crossout Designator and make the deck an even 40 cards. Um, Crossout has some really cool applications in the deck because you can use Crossout to banish like Paces or Shift, and even though it negates their effects this turn, it doesn't matter because uh, their, their effects don't trigger until the following standby after they were banished, or you can also use Crossout to banish one of the mutant bosses, which can help get cards like Mutant Cry online for you if you don't have a different attribute mutant already in rotation. Outside of that though, uh, those would be the things that I would consider if you don't decide to run Fenrir, but we are running Fenrir and Fenrir's absolutely cracked. Prepare to see this card everywhere you go. It's going to be very annoying and it's 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 difficult to deal with. It, it either going first, it adds an additional disruption for your opponent to deal with alongside your other stuff that you set up, or going second, it's just a card that they have to answer. Otherwise, they will get one of their cards banished face down. So it's going to bait the gates, which is really what we wanted to do. Um, and it can even search itself, which is just stupid. Um, but moving on, <clears throat> that's it for the monster lineup. Now we're going into the spells. Two copies of Evolution Lab. This is the Mutant Field spell. Uh, this allows us to special summon a mutant that's either banished or that's in our hand, as long as it's level 4 or lower. And then um, it has a marginal attack buff for mutants on the field. Um, all mutants gain 100 attack for each banished mutant card with a different name. And then um, it has a mulligan effect where you can take a mutant monster from your hand, place it on the bottom of the deck, and then draw a card. This is nice when you uh, brick or draw the level 8s, because usually you don't want to draw the level 8 mutants. Um, so you can put them back and at least mulligan your hand somewhat. So just two copies of the field spell, very, very strong. Then we're on one copy of Mutant Fusion. This card is like your typical fusion spell, fuses, uh, fuses, yeah, fusion summons using material from hand or field. However, if your opponent activated any card or effect this turn, you can also use material, uh, up to one material each from your deck and or graveyard. So if your opponent activated any type of card during your turn, this mutant fusion becomes a Shadal fusion and Miracle fusion all in one. But you just play one of it, because um, that's more than enough for what you need. Then we're on triple e Tully, of course, because all of our mutant starters are psychics, and e Tully is just free extension for days, can also help us play through disruption. And then we're also on the one called by the grave in the main, again, to stop hand traps and just any annoying sh things that we don't really want to deal with. 
And that's it for the spell lineup. Now we're into the traps. Triple copies of Mutant Cry. This is pretty much how we're going to be fusion summoning most of the time uh, during the opponent's turn. This uh, Think of this card as like uh, Tri Brigade Revolt, but for mutants. This lets you fuse using material from your field, your graveyard, or your banish zone by shuffling it back, and then you make a fusion monster. Very strong card. Uh, cannot understate how many times this card has gotten me out of a pinch. Uh, then we're on two copies of Mutant Expansion. This is like an in-archetype version of Emergency Teleport. However, uh, it has the additional benefit of if one of your mutant uh, level 8 or higher monsters would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card from your field instead. So it gives you uh, not only like an e type of effect, but you can also protect your uh, mutant bosses. Then we're on triple copies of Infinite Impermanence, the only hand trap we're main decking at the moment. Still very relevant even in this format. Imperm is just possibly the best hand trap, if not one of the best, in the in the game right now. Then we're on two copies of Draco Utopian Aura. Think of this like Solemn Strike without the life point payment, but you have the added benefit of, or the option to banish a monster from hand to then steal the monster that you negated and destroyed with this card. Nuts, especially when you consider that if you can banish goadies off of this and then get free advantage off of them on the following standby. Stupidly powerful card. Cannot underestimate how, how great this is. And then for the last card, your main deck is one copy of Goaty Fury. This is brand new out of Darkwing Blast. Uh, it's a continuous trap. And all we really use this card for is the first effect. And what it does is uh, we can target a fish we control and a monster the opponent controls as cost. Banish both monsters until my next standby phase. Keep in mind, my goadies, if they're banished, will come back um, during the following standby. No matter whose turn it is. Um, but if I banish an opponent's monster with this, it won't come back until my standby specifically. So this is a like continuous spot removal that I can repeatedly use to either bait out negates or remove annoying threats so I can comp build a board and then deal with the card later when it comes back. So as a one of it's fine. Again, this deck is still in testing, but I think I've tested it more than enough times to confirm that this build is very playable and very, very strong. Uh, like I said, um, for the update for the Mutant Goaty list, Really, realistically, the only new cards in the main deck are Zep, Snopios, the two Leaf Fish, the Fenrir, and um, the Goaty Fury. But that those changes alone makes the deck way more consistent and more powerful. Now we're going to be moving into the extra deck. We're on two Synthesis, one Ultimus. Again, this ratio will never change. Think of Ultimus like a better version of Invoke Mechaba, and Synthesis is like a Zodiac Dryden on Summon. Um, where upon its fusion summon, it can target a card in the field and destroy it. Uh, very, very strong fusion monsters uh, that the deck has to offer. Then for the brand new Synchros, we're on one copy of Arion Post, Serpent of the Goaty, the brand new Goaty level 6. This card is nuts. When it is Synchro summoned, you can banish a level 6 or lower fish from your deck. Then if this card is sent to the graveyard or Synchro material, you get to target a fish in your graveyard, banish it, then add a fish monster with an equal or lower level from deck to hand. This card jumpstarts so many plays and you can access it super easily off the lifeless leaf fish line. It's nuts. I, I can't underestimate how amazing this card is. Uh, then we're on one copy of White Aura Dolphin, just as in another additional level 6 Synchro we can go into, which has the added benefit of like ha uh, debuffing the opponent's... Uh, uh, their attack of their monsters, and if it's destroyed by any means, we can banish a water from Grave to resummon this card, and then it's treated as a tuner. And that resummon effect isn't even once per turn, so every time it gets destroyed, we can continually banish water monsters to resummon this thing over and over again, and then usually the cards you're banishing are goadies, so then the goadies are triggering on the next standby to come back anyway. Um, but our Aura Dolphin is really, really cool for that. One copy of Askan, the Bicorn Goatee. Again, very strong Goatee, level 8 Synchro. Uh, one copy of Google Him, Spear of the Goatee. This is brand new out of Darkwing Blast. Honestly, when I saw the artwork for this card, I thought it was going to be like a crazy like level 12 Synchro for the deck. Turns out it's just a level 8 with a mediocre effect. Um, while it's not very good because it relies on the battle phase specifically, it's still non-target, non-destruction removal, which you can't really look over. So for those purposes, we run the one copy, because again, you can just make this very easily, enter battle phase, and then anything this card battles at the start of damage step, uh, you just banish it immediately. So that's always really cool to have. Uh, then run one copy of Ad Emancipator Dragite, again for the uh, spell Trap Negate, and then two copies of Goaty the Deep Beyond. This is the boss monster that we make a lot of the time during the opponent's turn, and upon its... Uh, Synchro Summon, if it's the opponent's turn, it banishes all cards in the field. And then during the following standby of the turn it was banished, uh, it comes back and it gains 500 attack for each banished monster. So this thing gets big. Uh, very, very cool card. Then we're on one copy of uh, Supreme Sovereign Serpent, uh, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chengying, excuse me. 
Um, this is the Sword Soul level 10 Synchro. We make this um, if we can't go into Deep Beyond, for example, because it's our turn, and Deep Beyond won't trigger its uh, Banish effect when it's our turn. Uh, so this is another really strong level 10 we can make during our turn that um, its effects synergize extremely well with how the deck operates. And then we are on one copy of Psychic and Punisher. Again, very strong uh, level 11 Synchro. One Dingirsu, Orcus of the Evening Star, because a lot of our level 8 mutant bosses are level 8s, so in a pinch we can overlay them, make this, and non-target, non-destroy, send something on uh, field to grave. And then we are on one Sprite Elf in the one copy of Eerie of the Water Charmer in the extra deck to round it out. Um, moving on to the side, we'll run through that very briefly. We are on one Bestial Magnumut and two Bestial Druusworm. These cards take the slot of the Dimension Shifter we used to run, uh, we no longer play Dimension Shifter, neither in the main or the side. Reason being is I just think there's too many decks in the format that either A, don't care about Shifter, or B, can play right through it. Um, the only deck that really loses to Dimension Shifter specifically is Tyrellement, but now that we're going to have uh, Magnificent Mavens dropping next month, which comes with the brand new Ishizu cards, uh, I feel like a lot of Tyrellement decks are going to be main decking Herald of the Orange Light, which hard counters Shifter anyway. So like, I just think Shifter's bad moving it forward, um, so we replace them with the brand new Bestials, because they're pretty much all DD Crows uh, with a free body, and uh, very strong effects. Magnumut, when it's summoned, can search any dragon from deck to hand, in this case being Jewish Worm. And then Jewish Worm, if it's sent to the graveyard, doesn't matter how, uh, we can target a special summon monster the opponent controls and send it to grave. This pairs very nicely with our Goatee level 2s because we can use the Druid Swarm and a Goatee uh, Tuner to make a level 8 Synchro on the opponent's turn, especially since the Bist deals are all quick effects to summon themselves by banishing lights or darks. So very cool interaction there. Then we're on Triple Dark Ruler in the side, of course, because going second, you just got to be able to, like, break their board. Uh, triple MST in the side deck as our spell trap removal of choice. I don't want to play Twin Twisters because there's nothing we really value off the discard. And I don't want to play Cosmic Cyclone because we already pay enough life points by using our Mutant Mutant in our main deck. Um, and I don't want to be caught in a situation where my life is too low, especially in game three. So I think MST does the job perfectly fine. Uh, you know, it's still spell trap removal at its finest. It's a one for one trade. Then we're on two triple tactics talents in the side again, just to help facilitate with going second. Uh, one mutant blast. We side into this for specific matchups. Pretty much just an equip spell that while it's equipped to a level eight or higher mutant, at the start of damage step, if it battles an opponent's special summon monster, you can banish that monster. So pretty similar to uh, the Googlim, the brand new Goaty Synchro, but just in the form of an equip spell. Which is searchable on our theme. Uh, and then for the last cards that we run on the side is triple evenly matched again, just to help break boards going second. But that's going to round out the updated mutant goatee list post Darkwing Blast, guys. Let me know what you guys think of this deck. Honestly, it's it's the chef's kiss. It's so strong, and it is the most consistent mutant goatee deck I think I've built on the channel thus far. So if you guys liked what you saw here, comment down below, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for some really cool upcoming content that I have in the works. You guys are going to like the deck that I'll bring to you guys next week on the channel as a profile. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for your time. And um, like I said, this is hands down, I can almost guarantee the most definitive version of Mutant Goatee you guys will see in the channel. Um, and that's about it. Thank you again.